Okay, today's lesson is on integers and absolute value. The first thing that I want you to do is I want you to get your composition notebooks out that we set up on Tuesday. I want you to turn to the glossary. Remember, we set aside some pages in the back for our vocabulary words. Turn to wherever your glossary is. Depends on how big your composition notebook was, what page that fell on. Anywhere from probably page 90 to 95 is what page it fell on. This particular one uh, fell on page 93. Okay, so turn to your glossary, and we're going to start putting in some vocabulary words. Your first vocabulary word is going to be integer. So you're going to turn to your eyes. Okay? You're going to write the word integers. Okay? And you're going to put your definition in. An integer is this. Okay? It's all the whole numbers, their opposites, plus zero integers i n t e g e r s okay you can drop that let me show you what that means on the number line here's a number line here's zero okay one two three four and i could keep going on and on and on that's what a number line is it keeps going on and on and on in both directions now to the left of zero there are numbers smaller than zero. We've got negative one, then negative two, then negative three, then negative four. These are all integers, okay? Now notice over here, um, as we go further to the right, the numbers keep getting bigger, okay? Two is obviously bigger than one, three is obviously bigger than two. As you go further to the right, they get bigger. On the left-hand side, though, negative 1, closer to 0 than negative 2. Negative 1 is further to the right than negative 2, so it's actually bigger than negative uh, 2. So the further left you go on the number line, the smaller the number actually gets, even though they appear to be getting bigger. Okay? Your next vocabulary word is positive, so turn to the P's, P-O-S-I-T-I-V-E. Here's the definition for positive, okay? This is everything to the right of zero, okay? The actual definition of positive means greater than zero. So on the number line, can move that? These numbers, everything to the right of zero, these are positive, okay? All right, next vocabulary word, turn to the ends. The word is negative, negative, N-E-G-A-T-I-V-E. -E. That's everything to the left of zero, okay? That means less than zero. So on your number line, these numbers to the left are your negative numbers, okay? Now before I move on to the next vocabulary word, I do want to talk to you just a minute about what are some examples of not, uh, excuse me, some non-examples of integers. Because not all numbers are integers. Okay? Two and a half is not an integer. Um, negative 3.7. Are these still showing up? Can you see them on the screen? Negative 3.7 is not an integer. Um, four and two-thirds. Are these showing up? are not integers. And the reason is this. The definition of integers is all the whole numbers, right? And their opposites. Whole numbers. There's no parts in an integer, no fractional parts. These pieces right here are parts of a number. They're not whole, so they cannot be integers. The other part of the definition of integer that I want to make sure you understand is that piece that says their opposites. Okay? Opposite simply means opposite sign. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. The opposite of 2 is negative 2. Okay? The opposite of negative 3 is 3. Okay? It just means the opposite sign. Alright, the last vocabulary word is absolute value. Turn to your A's. Okay? Absolute value. Two words. Whoops. Sorry about that. All right, so show me the definition for absolute value. It's a number's distance from zero. Okay, absolute value has to always, always, always be positive. Okay, 
You can move that. Let me show you what I mean by that. This number Let's two. Popping. Son, I'm in the middle of the lesson. Eighth graders. Okay. The absolute value of two is two because the number two is two units away from zero. The absolute value of negative two is still two because negative two is also two units away from zero. Let me show you how absolute value is written. It's written with these bars. These are absolute value bars and the number is placed inside of it. This means the absolute value of negative 13. Okay? The absolute value of negative 13 is just 13. Remember, absolute value is always positive. It represents a distance, and distance cannot be negative. Okay? The number negative 13 is 13 units away from zero. This problem, the absolute value of 5. Okay? It's still 5. It's not negative 5. It's not the opposite. Because the number 5 is 5 units away from 0. It doesn't matter which direction you're traveling. Okay? So, what I'd like for you to do now is get your, turn your notebooks to page 5. Remember, page 5? I know. In your notebooks. And I want you either side, it doesn't matter which side you make your writing side. If you're right-handed, you may want to do this on the right-hand side of page 5. If you're left-handed, you may want to do it on the left-hand side, but it doesn't really matter. On page 5, one of the sides, I want you to give yourselves two columns, a teacher column and a student column, just like this. Okay? All right. I'm going to do the same thing here on my board. Is this showing up? Yes. Teacher, student. Okay, go ahead and take notes on the teacher side. I'm going to give you some examples of some problems with absolute value. And then I'm going to give you some practice problems that you're going to complete and bring back to class tomorrow. Okay? First one. The absolute value of negative 7 equals 7 because negative 7 is 7 units away from 0. Okay? Number 2, the absolute value, you should be writing these down on your teacher side, the absolute value of 130, it's not negative 130, it's not the opposite. 130 is how many steps away from 0? It's 130 steps away from 0. Okay? The only other thing I want to prepare you for tomorrow is expressions that have absolute value in them. For example, let's say the absolute value of negative 5 plus the absolute value of 12. Okay, before I can give the answer to this, I've got to simplify it and I've got to get rid of the absolute value bars. Okay, so I'm going to say the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Right? Five units away from zero plus, what's the absolute value of 12? 12. Now I can add these numbers together. Five plus 12 is 17. Okay? Now, on your student side, you're going to do these three practice problems. Okay? Bring them to class tomorrow. I want you to tell me what the absolute value of 13 is for number one. Number two, the absolute value of negative 22. And number three, I want you to tell me what the absolute value of 16 plus the absolute value of, I don't know, negative three. Okay, those are your three problems to bring in tomorrow. In addition to that, I want you to get out a sheet of paper and I want you to give me five real world examples of positive numbers out in the real world and five real world examples of negative numbers. When do you see negative numbers out in the real world? It's easy to come up with positive examples because we've been using positive, positive numbers since kindergarten. Okay? 
Um, out in the real world, if I climb up a hill and when I get to where I'm going, I'm so many feet above sea level, that's positive. But what may not be as easy to come up with are those negative examples of, excuse me, negative numbers out in the real world. Okay, so I want you to think about that. Make a list, five positive real world examples, five negative real world examples. Okay, and I'll see you tomorrow.